Paul McGuire Grimes, KSTP, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Jake, Antoine, it is really great talking to both of you today. I'm very honored by this. I really enjoyed the film. I mean, the intensity and then just how eye-opening it was to that line of work. I really appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we enjoyed the work. Good. <laughs> Good. Now, Jake, I know that you love research and really diving into the lives and the jobs of the characters that you portray. Did you get to sit in on 911 calls? And what was the most kind of revealing thing that you learned about that line of work? Um, you know, uh, I spent, I've spent many years, even through the research I've done on other films, which is probably why I had such a visceral response to the story of this one. Um, listening to 911 calls, um, being around first responders, uh, so I, you know, Antoine said this, and I think he would say it, and I was, we we flipped back and forth in terms of what we said, but I think one of the most incredible things I learned was that oftentimes a 911 operator doesn't get to hear the end of what happens. Right. doesn't get to know whether or not what they've aided, you know, so intensely in a situation they've started so personally with someone and then handed it off. They never get to know whether the person is okay or what happens to those, those, people that they interact with. And that was something I never really knew or understood, you know, mm -hmm. and just what effect that has on them in their own mind, uh, psychologically, mentally, uh, it takes a fortitude. Um, I think the question for me always was, do they have a place where they're allowed to speak about that, where they're allowed to express those feelings? How do those feelings come out? Because, um, you know, you can have, leave things unresolved and many things in your life, but when you're dealing with life and death as they are on a minute by minute basis, mm -hmm. we all need people to, to talk to. We right. all need people to express ourselves to. And I, um, I think, and I wish, and I hope that they do, you know, but that, that was what I, that was an incredible thing to learn. I would never have thought of that angle, but just that idea of, you know, you are at the beginning of it, you don't know the end, and then you don't you don't really want to talk about that, but it has to have some effect on you afterwards. Now, Anton, you've worked with Jake before on Southpaw, but here you didn't really direct him on set. You were in a van with walkie-talkies and FaceTime. Was that a creative choice given the nature of the story? Was it a COVID choice somewhere in the middle? And how did that stretch you as a director? It was because he'd worked with me before <laughs> that he wanted to be in a van <laughs> really <laughs> far away. <laughs> Down by the river. <laughs> That's why we're doing it like this as well. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no it, was, it was a COVID choice. And, um, you know, it, it, it certainly wasn't a creative choice at first. You know, it was frustrating at first. Um, we had a lot of technical issues. It became a creative choice along the way because it was really, I mean, I was stuck the way Jeff was stuck. Like, right. like, like Jake was stuck, right? You know, I found myself just sort of alone in this van with all the monitors and stuff. I was just in the movie, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I was sort of uh, emotionally and creatively in that same sort of space he was in, just on my side of things as a filmmaker. But it certainly uh, wasn't a creative choice. It became that. When I was able to go to the set, Jake asked me, was I going to come to the set that day? And I said, absolutely not. Mm. Because also it was working for me, you know? Right. Because I was just with him on the set. You got the crew, you got everybody, you got a lot going on. I had my spy camera. I could see everything and talk to everybody, you know, direct mm -hmm. things I needed to direct. But to be able to just really just be with Jake, that's what it was like. Because I had him all the time in my frame, no one else. Mm -hmm. there, was no, there was no other conversations with my DP or grips face to face. It was just over the communications. So that that's was a pretty amazing experience. It's fascinating. I got the rap, but Jake, I have to tell you, I've seen you on Broadway and standing in the park with George and Seawall Alive, oh. and congrats on your Tony nomination. So these have been unforgettable, very memorable, cherished memories I have. So thank you for that. Oh, thank you. That's yeah. so Makes me so oh. happy. Oh, second row center for Sunday. It was phenomenal. <laughs> so thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. Thank you.